So now we have Dr. Amin with us and he will show you some few tips regarding the airway management important points uh, so that everybody who is uh, working either in the periphery or tertiary care center they will get benefit. Thank you very much sir. So we are talking about here some basic airway maneuver and then airway agents and some advanced airway. So uh, basic airway maneuver is we know that uh, noisy respirations or obstructed respirations. So if suppose there is an upper airway obstruction and most of time this is the tongue which is causing basically the upper airway. Mm -hmm. This is the tongue fall which is causing majorly the airway obstructions. This is, this is epi epiglottis. Just below the epiglottis you can see there is a trachea. So this is a tongue fold. This is tongue fold. Endigotum. This is epiglottis and just below the epiglottis you can see the trachea. Now, it, now it so at the time of... So uh, you can show that how it is if, uh, yeah. So somebody got uh, unconscious, all the muscle tone release, in fact this uh, uh, tongue is a big muscle, so it got also relaxed and then what it do is, it the obstruct. loose tongue obstruct the airway mm -hmm. and it cause mostly the noisy respirations. Mm -hmm. So how to relieve it? So what you can do is, you can come to the side of patient and you can perform some basic maneuvers like head tilt and chin lift. Here, you need to put your one hand or, uh, on the head of forehead of the patient. Your ulnar border should uh, touch to the hairline of patient. With the two fingers, you are lifting the chin and you are, you know, tilting the head and lifting the chin. This is called head tilt and chin lift. But you cannot put the patient for a longer time in this position. So what you have, you have some airway adjunct to put. Uh, how this airway adjunct works? So I'm having a you know different size of OPA that is called oropharyngeal airway and the nasopharyngeal airway is here. So what this oropharyngeal airway do? See indication for both the airways are same. This is uh, upper airway obstruction and uh, how this mechanism works uh, in the patient. So this is patient's airway and if you put this uh, OPA, what this OPA do is it hold the tongue like this. What you can do? You can do suction, you can uh, introduce the air. Can just show it yeah. uh, how it is holding the tongue. Okay. So, right. So you can do suction along with this and then you can, uh, you know, uh, int uh, introduce the air or oxygen inside the uh, patient. So it is creating an airway basically. This tube is creating an airway. But uh, you cannot, there is absolute contradiction of this oropharyngeal airway and which is what? you cannot use this into the conscious patient what will happen otherwise this opa will touch to the posterior pharyngeal wall and this can stimulate the gag reflex right secondly you cannot you know uh, if if it is a bigger side it cannot hold the tongue okay so and it can also you know stimulate the gag reflex so uh, that this opa should have a correct size how to measure an opa size so the correct OPA you have to measure from angle of mouth to the angle of mandible. This jawline is crossing and creating an angle. This is called the angle. This is the angle of mandible. So you need to put your OPA right over here and you need to measure from here. Okay. So if it is correct size, you can use this. If it is a bigger one, this is of no use. Okay. So how to do that? So again, you can put the patient into the head tilt and chill lift position. And what you can do is now, secondly, you need to introduce the OPA from opposite side, not like this, otherwise, it will push the tongue. So, what you can do is so you introduce it once you will feel resistance, you turn it, don't push it, otherwise, oral injury can happen or oral bleedings are always bad. Then, you need to turn it to the 180 degree and then you are introducing it right like this. So, now patient's uh, you know face can be in line you can do the suction or you can do the ambu or you can you know give the oxygen to the patient absolute contraindication for op again i'm saying is when the patient is having a gag reflex we should not introduce the opa so what we can do is we have other options we have np or nasopharyngeal airway again indication is noisy respirations so what you can do is uh, you can insert this device from the nose so altogether, if you're introducing from the nose, it will come somewhat over here. Okay. So here uh, you can give oxygen to the glottis right over here. 
comes right over here what will happen if it is you know a bigger one so it can touch to the posterior pharyngeal wall and it can stimulate the cag reflex if the patient is conscious you can use it into the conscious patient also right so how to use it you need to put a jelly and you need to take a correct size first so how to take a correct size from the nares to the pina or tragus right over here okay from pina to the nares if it is a bigger one then it's of no use so you can see the bevel end over here it should not touch to the conchas so from both the side there will be uh, different techniques okay so suppose if you are putting it from here okay so just do the spiral motion and then you can introduce like in this way suppose if it is getting obstructed pull it back make it straighter and then introduce like this okay this is how you can introduce the op npa if you are putting it from the second nares it will rotate like this then you have to introduce make 180 degree angle and then it is this is about the opa and npa i'm coming to the next part that is basically lma laryngeal pass scale as you can see uh, this is blind insertion device uh, these are basically the lma or laryngeal mass scale when you are ventilating a patient <coughs> with the BVM or back wall mask if it is not much effective so you can put this mask directly over the glottis how you can put it I am having one device look this is so LMA. this is a LMA laryngeal mask airway it's a mask and this mask is fitted where this mask is fitted just to the glottis okay right over here just like this and what is ventilating you are ventilating trachea directly with this so how to do that so you need to have a syringe jelly and different size of element like this is three this is both three sizes can i have a jelly spray spray so since this is a mannequin i'm using a spray over here so what you can do is first inflate the lma check the puncture there is no puncture put it on firm flat surface remove the air with two fingers okay make a correct shape right here okay this is a correct shape because once you will introduce you are you are going to inflate so it should be giving a correct distributing a correct pressure all over the <coughs> face suppose i am deflating it without putting any fingers so what will happen see it is deflating in a wrong manner okay see okay so this is the correct one correct method of deflating then put a jelly i'm putting some lubricant over here what you can do is now you need to hold it like a pen okay or you need to you know uh, you need to guide with a finger so make a head tilt and chin lift in which direction it should be so this is touching to the posterior uh, you know uh, this heart pellet this posterior part will touch to the heart pellet okay yeah. and this part will come to the toward the tongue okay. so this is a blind technique so anyway you are going to introduce into the esophagus only so till it is going you are introducing it okay once it is done then you need to inflate it okay you need to push 30 to 40 ml of air and then you can measure it from the pilot balloon okay now my pilot balloon is full see the pressure is good let's see so you see that this is a good alternative of an intubation when you are not having you know resources or something then you can uh, you have introduced it and then you can ventilate the lung properly <coughs> with the arm okay you can see that it is inflating suppose if it is inflating to the stomach you can see that okay and it happens that if you have induced it and then uh, it is inflating to the uh, you know abdomen is having more motion so what you have to do is you need to do little modification okay so you need to again remove it okay you need to again remove it so what you have done is you have introduced it more okay 
So what you have to do is, again, deflate it properly. You have deflated it. And at this time, don't introduce much, okay? Yes. Right here, okay? So I have introduced it. It failed, right? See, the lungs are in pretty sad. But this uh, will not give you 100% protection towards the gastric inflation. Only the endotracheal tube can give you 100% protection or 99.99% protection uh, for the gastric inflation. Okay. Anything else left? Uh, endotracheal tube. So, Dr. Ravin will show you how to introduce the endotracheal tube. If you want a detailed lecture specifically for endotracheal intubation, you can go and check the link in the description or at the top of this video. There is a link how to intubate the crashing patient in which we have explained how to identify the term the term fold uh, epiglottis and then below the epiglottis you need to identify trachea and then you can introduce. So he will just show you uh, how to proceed with endotracheal intubation on the meningue. Endotracheal intubation is always a planned process. So you need to have uh, preparation, all the preparation along with you. Uh, what preparation you require for endotracheal intubation? See, you require uh, the laryngoscope set uh, with different blade, uh, working uh, the laryngoscope set. Then you require a tube, different size of tube. You require ambu bag, you require stethoscope, you require certain medications, you require suction tube and everything along with you. So this is how you have you have to have a preparation. So uh, you need to ventilate first. Okay. So ventilation is important. Ventilate RSI can give a good ventilation, right? Uh, but uh, you know, uh, if good ventilation is existed, or it doesn't need every time the RSI or rapid sequence of intubation. So what you need to do is uh, you have you took all the preparation. Now uh, put the patient into the position. Okay. So what should be the position? The position is a sniffing position. Sniffing position is what? Somebody is sniffing like this. So little chin forward. Okay. You can put a you know some cushion or something and then little head in and chill it. This position should be there. Okay. Now what you have to do is some basic uh, anatomy we need to understand before intubating. Okay. So what you have to do is see. Once you are introducing this laryngoscope inside the mouth, what you are doing is first you have to see the mouth. Okay, from you have to go from lateral to medial. Okay, so you have to see the mouth, tongue, push the tongue, then see the landmarks. What landmark you can see? First thing you will see is the epiglottis. Once you see the epiglottis, half of the way has been done. Just below, you know, this tongue and start from the epiglottis this portion is called carina. okay sorry uh, uh, vellicula so you need to push the vellicula once you are pushing the vellicula the mouth strip mechanism will happen and epiglottis will come up once the epiglottis is coming up the next structure you can see is the vocal cord okay or a trachea this is a direct uh, you know laryngoscopy or direct visualization technique so it is important you to see the uh, trachea or uh, the vocal cord should be visual right. all the time. Okay. So these are the this is tongue. This is epiglottis. This portion this portion is epiglottis. Okay. Now you can see this portion is epiglottis. And, and you can see the vocal cord. And okay. this is this is vellicula and this is vocal cord. Okay. These are the vocal cord. Right. So what you have to do is, <coughs> so uh, you need to push the tongue. See, and uh, uh, as we were discussing that uh, there are the you know three amps you need to remember. Okay. What is that? First is a difficult for a difficult intubation. One is a malambati score. So if somebody is you know uh, 
uh, if you open the mouth and you can see that both the you know uh, tonsils are visible that means this is a malapati grade one if half of the tonsils are visible then this is malapati grade two hardly you know you can see the heart pellet and other structure that is malapati two even though you know you cannot see all of these things then this is malapati grade four so this is difficult intubation uh, then there is a second way to do that three three one so what is three if three fingers cannot be introduced inside the mouth it is a difficult from chin to the hyoid bone if three fingers are not there then it is the difficult one right so that is there hyperextension of a neck so if you cannot do the atlanto occipital joint uh, you know rotation that is a difficult intubation all these intubations are making a difficult intubation sometimes we call that this as a short neck person uh, or very obese person are having a difficult intubation so these are the things we need to take care of cervical spine uh, rule out cervical spine injury also yes suppose if the patient is having suspected cervical spine fracture then you cannot extend the neck you need to do the jaw thrust maneuver and you need to intubate into the same position over there okay you cannot uh, you know disturb the alignment of the neck over there so uh, again uh, you know i'm holding this uh, uh, laryngoscope in my left hand you need to hold the laryngoscope only on the left hand because the groove is on the right side so you need to hold the laryngoscope onto the left hand only okay and this wrist joint should be locked it should not be having any kind of movement and then you are lifting uh, the tongue in upward and uh, forward direction okay so like this again i'm seeing the i'm, I'm just watching this uh, tongue i can see the tongue okay i think you are also able to see this and then there is a uh, epiglottis I'm going to the valecula, pushing the valecula right over here, and what you are seeing is the vocal cord. Can you able to see? Right here. Yeah. See, this is epiglottis. Uh, this is epiglottis, and then see the most trap mechanism. How beautiful it is there. Okay, and right here it is a vocal cord. Okay. Right over here is a vocal cord. See, this is a direct laryngoscopy technique. So you need to introduce the tube. Uh, this is a right vein, vein, so hmm. not the actual patient, but just this is just to show the technique. Yeah. Okay. So you can see the tube is inside, and then you need to uh, fix it. See, uh, from teeth to the vocal cord, it is fifteen centimeter. From teeth sternal. to the sternal notch, it is 20 centimeter, and from teeth to manubri, it is 25 centimeter. So I'm putting this tube somewhat around 20 to in between 22 to 24, right? Right over here. Then see, I'm very much confident because tube has been uh, inserted uh, into the vocal cord. Then I need to push the air. So I'm pushing 10 to 15 ml of air right over here. And I'll see whether uh, the lungs are inflating or not. You can see that the lungs are properly inflating and there is no air is going inside the stomach. Can you also explain this combi tube? Yes, sure sir. Combi tube and King's airway, these two devices are also the blind insertion device. See, this is called the tube. you can see that this is very rigid okay and uh, this device is a made in a way that it should uh, go to primarily it should go to the esophagus but it can also uh, it can go to the trachea also means there are only two openings are there inside the mouth one is a trachea one is a esophagus so this tube can go at any of the tube right so uh, you can see that there are two tubes tube number one and tube number two this is tube number one okay and uh, this one is a tube number two okay um, now tube number two is you can see this is a white so uh, and the white balloon is here and the white pilot balloon is also there this everything is for the tube number two this blue one is for tube number one this, this bulb is of this bulb, bulb and this one is belong to the tube number one so what will happen 
Suppose you into yeah, then there are fenestration in between this. There are fenestrations over here. So what will happen? So suppose this combi tube is going inside the esophagus. What will happen? See. Suppose if it is going inside the esophagus. So the fenestration comes just in front of these vocal cords. Okay. Or a glottic opening. Okay. And then this balloon will come into the mouth and, and it. it will in, it will seal the mouth and that will seal the esophagus. So air will move inside the chest. So and means, means either the air can move out from here or can move out from, from the here. Fenestration. Yes. So if this portion is in the trachea, yes. that means we are already in the trachea. Uh, yes. We but are if this is in the esophagus and we have created a seal here, because of these penetrations, the air will move into the trachea. Trachea. Suppose this go directly into the trachea. You have already intubated then. So that's why two tubes are there. You need to ventilate either of the tube. Okay. So what you have to do is, this is a blind process. You don't need laryngoscope and other things. Okay. You need to put a position. Okay. Put a jelly right over here. I'm putting some jelly. And this is a blind insertion. Directly it is going inside inside the stomach. Either in trachea or into the stomach. Okay. Um, this is very rigid, so there may be chances of uh, you know uh, uh, tracheal or esophageal injury. Uh, this can rupture to the esophagus and trachea also sometimes. Okay. So you need to deduce you need to deduce as much as possible, okay? As much as possible. And then we need to inflate both the balloons. So first we need to inflate the blue balloon. Okay, and then you need to inflate the uh, this This is the upper one? The upper one. And this is the lower one. This tube number one and tube number two. So putting there. Some 100 ml of air will go over here. This is 15 ml. Hmm. Okay. This is the upper belly. Yeah. It's, the, it's into the throat. And second one is. Um, check. So first is. Uh, okay. It's not going. Then approach the second view. <coughs> So this tube is inside the esophagus, but the stomach is inflating. So that means what? Our tube is at upper level. You need to introduce this tube more so that the esophagus will compress properly. Okay. This is a mannequin, not fit, uh, made for this, but this is just a demonstration to show you that such tube exists and you can use it in emergency. Yeah. What you can do is you can introduce it more. This is in the esophagus. Yeah, it's in the esophagus. It's in the esophagus. Okay. So just this is a demonstration. This how you do it. Now you will when you will, uh, you will connect the tube to this. So basically, basically this was just a demonstration how to insert a combi tube. So insert it deeply. You have inflated both the balloons. When you in, push air into this, this means this tube will be the esophagus. No problem with that. You disconnect and inflate with this. Now, what will happen? There is seal between the lower esophagus balloon and the upper uh, uh, pharyngeal balloon. 
they will create a seal and the because of those for registration that whatever area you push from here they will go into the lung so this and is a hard one actually generally this two marking should come to the teeth level actually okay so this is about this is not according to this mannequin just we need to demonstrate so when these markings will go up to the teeth level then it will work properly Mm. Uh, Dr. Ravan, uh, what is the difference between kings and this one? Kings, yes. kings. Do we have kings ever? Bring the twins, kings ever. Yes. Thank you, king. King ever. So, wait, sir, one minute. Bringing the kings ever. See, this device, uh, on video. Is it smaller? No, the same one. So this device combi tube uh, generally it's not been much of used but these are the blind devices LMA laryngeal mask here is a blind device this is a blind device and King's airway is also a blind, blind device King's airway is also made in a way that uh, it can either go of any of these tubes so that you can ventilate properly so you can see this uh, I'm having this King's airway here right over here Unfortunately, this big balloon has been punctured over here, but uh, mechanism is same. See what will happen right over here. This is a King's LD or King's LD. So this will go either of uh, you know in, into the tube. Either it will go into the esophagus. Mainly, it is made in a way that it should go to the esophagus. So if it is going into the esophagus, then this two fen uh, fenestration this will ventilate the trachea right over here. And suppose. Uh, if it is vein to the trachea you have already intubated it yeah. right so what you have to do is i'm deflating first to this okay. this is one opening and this is one so if it goes into the trachea already you are swindling if it is going into the esophagus you, this balloon will seal the esophagus this will seal the pharynx and this will ventilate the trachea right so this is a blind device you just need to introduce like this that's it okay so 14 15 and 16 these centimeters are there mm -hmm. and then your teeth marking could, will be at the 14 or 15 or 16 suppose if you have kept it on 14 if it is not uh, you know uh, uh, ventilating on a 14 you can little introduce it more on a 15 if it is not then 16 okay so i'm keeping it on the 14 and then what i do is first i'll uh, inflate it Okay, so, so rupture, yeah, there is a rupture, but the partial we it will be going to inflate, I believe. And then what you have to do is you need to ventilate it. Ventilate it. Since this is ruptured one, so uh, it is difficult to see the chest rises over here. In case suppose uh, the tube is in uh, inserted in the trachea, what you can do is. You can remove the red one, uh, this, uh, and you can ventilate right from here. Okay, uh, you can put it this, uh, you know, red connector. Uh, you remove it. You again introduce it over here, okay. and then you can ventilate from here into the trachea. Okay, this is how it will. So you have seen the difference. There were two tubes uh, in the comp. So. We have seen that in the difference between combi tube and King's airway and the LMA. Uh -huh. in, there were two openings here. There are also two openings. One is this one and one is this one. But this is shorter device and instead of fenestration, they have proper openings and it is more easy to insert. So King's airway is, is cheaper also, advanced one also. Instead of combi tube, King's airway can be used. Uh, in certain emergencies or uh, patients in which you don't find an airway, you just insert it. This will go into the esophagus. This will seal the upper airway, and somewhat oxygenation you can uh, do from here. So that's it. Yes, sir. Anything more, uh, Ravin? Remaining? So I, I thank Dr. Ravin for uh, demonstrating all all of this. Actually, the session has been closed today, but he is especially uh, stayed with us and recorded a video to show that how to manage airway or at least we can show you some tips regarding managing airway. Thank you. Thank you very much.